Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner Classic Last No Classics. This is episode number 2207 and double shot 2101. I have an image trade and a DC trade. One is second volume from this trade series and it's still publishing. This other one is the finale. I'll get to her. First up is, of course, Nocturna, Volume 2, Pedal to the Metal. That's what this one's called. This collect issue 7 to 11 and the Nocturna Special, Black Top Bill. Yeah, just just Black Top Bill's origin story. Mostly put, it continues the story that's been going on since issue 1. The whole world has got no sunlight because it's blocked out for some reason. And, like, the only way you can actually see is, like, at night is with all the car lights. And there's some electricity, but there's no sunlight. But I'm curious, though. Like, how are these people eating if there's no sunlight? Like, until they grow food? Yeah. Now, you might be curious, though. Do they bother to investigate, basically, why in the world it's like this? I don't know. A lot of the time, basically, it just... Oh, yeah. Let's have everything powered by, basically, car lights. Yeah. And, by the way, Val herself, that's the main character's book... She doesn't do a lot in the book, surprisingly, despite like, being the main character. In these few issues, she doesn't do much anything at all. Um, it's not a terrible set of issues, per se. It's just that, well, it just feels like, basically, we have the main character kind of reduced to a supporting character for these issues for some strange reason. It's okay. Scott Snyder does a great job with the writing, and then, of course, Tony Estienne does an awesome job with the artwork. Excuse me. Yeah, this is Tony Estienne, though. Feels a bit. Some panels look like they're a bit rushed, per se. But I do like the colors. Like, I say the flash by sequence is still a bit rushed. But I think we get the present day stuff, basically. That's what stuff starts changing. That's what basically gets normal. Yeah. I think it's kind of weird, though, that basically the flashbacks don't look as good as the present day stuff. But that's here and there. All right. Next up we have is the third and final trade for Gotham. Future State Gotham. This is called. Batman at War. Yes, this is the third, and like I mentioned, the final trade that collect issues from this very series. This one collect issues 13, 18 of this series. Now, I have actually talked to uh, the creator of one of the characters in this book, uh, Hunter Panic, who is actually Mother Panic. Now, I did mention this to her on Twitter, like, how does she feel about this character appearing in this book? She loves it. And the fact that I named her after one of the co-creators. I think it was the artist. Yes. Uh, mostly put, basically, it's like the people who are associated with the Batman family fighting each other the whole book. We have Damian Wayne as his six, one, the 6 of 6 Batman here. We have Dick Grace becoming Batman. Uh, no Tim Drake, surprising in the story. Red Hood is not even a character in these issues. Because most, but also, also we, all, we do have... Uh, Jace Fox, we usually a brief cameo by the Batman villains. Clayface, Killer Croc, I believe the Scarecrow, Copperhead, Victor Zaz. Uh, love the artwork here, which is done by, uh, this artwork is done by, you have Giffield, Gaius McGinnis, uh, Giffield, Gaius McGinnis, Justin Greenwood, and Brad Sampson. Now, of course, like, since the whole series like they say, colors. It's in black and white. No, but the final issue is actually color. Yep. Of course, we do have Damien pop up in his uh, outfit he pop they wore in the Joshua M. Summer for Robin. The covers are in color. The, the interiors. Now, here you have Damien in his 666 costume. Not really sure why. Oh, here, here she is. This is Heather Panic. Yeah. The, the, the person I talked to, the one who's I've actually met her person, Mother Panic's co creator, Jody Hauser. She loves it that the character featured here. Aside from the name change, she's virtually the same character. She loves the fact that Violet's here. Which, good on the writers for including her. I kind of wish regular DC Comics would feature her. I mean, there's nothing that stated that the Mother Panic comic was not canon to the DC Universe. Young Animal may have done his own thing, per se. 
But there was nothing to say about the panic could not be in the regular DC Comics. Yep. I believe Hunter is also the name of the... I believe it was the name of the artist who co-created uh, Mother Panic with Jody Hauser. But yeah. We have Hush in here. But in case you're curious though, what of those is the book called in color? Also the Magistrate themselves, they're barely a factor in this war of the Batman stuff. We had the various people who are Batman fighting to claim the title. Also Nightwing is having a thing where Oh, basically, oh, we also have talent showing up here. We're like, oh, telling John, telling uh, Jace Fox. And at one point, we actually have the ghost of Joe Chell back in here possessing Damien for reasons. Yes, the guy who inadvertently caused all this because he killed, killed the Waynes. In the final issue, well, then we finally have the book go the color. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Basically, during the last ten pages of the book, they mysteriously say, Oh, let's put the book in color up being black and white for basically 17 straight issues. I do like the Batman S style of thing, but it almost seems like the Madison story, who are basically the main bad guys of the series, they're pretty much shoved to the side here. Red Hood, barely featured. It's all about Dick Grayson. It's all about the other people's social Batman family. It's them fighting each other over the title of Batman. Dick Grayson's like, I'm Batman. Damien's like, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yes. Everybody's claiming they're Batman and basically fighting each other who could be the real Batman. Also, Bruce in this issue, in this issue too. And he becomes Batman again. Talia's here. Damien's mom. His hot mom, mind you. I mean, does the storyline feel resolved? Kind of, yes. But I kind of feel as though these issues felt as though they didn't really need to be here at all. It kind of felt as though that the series should have wrapped up with issue 12. But they probably tacked on these last second issues. Maybe because basically the book did get a sales boost. Maybe. With the Joker stuff. I'll give this book roughly a 9 out of 10. Now, my final thoughts on the Future State Gotham series. I'm going to pick up the critical here. He thought the series was a bomb. You call a series last 18 issues a bomb? You say it's very lasting. I mean, there's nothing to say this was a limited series. Okay. Here's a question for everybody. And answer me this. Name one long-running comic book for DC Comics that is a Maxi series and is less as a Maxi series in the DC solicits. There are some. Was this book less as, as, a, lim, as a maxi series? Limited series? No. No it was not. It never was. The entire series. Now this series. I kind of thought this though. With the second story. I kind of thought this was a sure wrap up. Because you get to the end of that 12th issue. It feels as though. We did wrap up the story here. But I guess DC is like. But Wait. Let's bring back Bruce Wayne for the final. Let's bring back for for our final six issues here. Despite the fact, if you look at the series itself, the series practically concluded with issue twelve, and these feel like bonus issues they just probably tacked on because these editor requested. But these are terrible. No, I like them. I think they're really good. It is interesting though the fact that that. Future State was one thing some people didn't like very much because some people liked. Uh, the biggest thing people didn't like about Future State is stuff that characters have them in here. And this, oh, we're going to set up stuff. We're going to basically lead this stuff. One of the biggest things that came out of Future State was the Magistrate. Which exists only in Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, only a Batman, and uh, it basically was the primary storyline for Fear State. Yes, they were not technically main antagonists per se, because maybe on that storyline was the freaking Scarecrow. Which you might be asking, what was the last time he was made villain of a story? Not for a long time, mind you. <laughs> yeah, and of course, sadly enough, that was the final storyline under James the Fourth. But in the case of the series as a whole. Uh, Future State Gotham was a series necessary 
Uh, not really per se, but they probably really want to continue the Future State stuff after Future State was over. And it is something that if everything is associated with Future State, Batman gets the Batman stuff gets an ongoing series. Not the Superman stuff, not the Wonder Woman stuff, not anything else associated with Future State, just this Batman stuff. Oh yeah, the Magistrate, they're practically like taken down by halfway through the storyline. Yeah. Oh, by the way, they do mention that when uh, Josh Williamson brief took up, when he had a brief run, they do mention the Magistrate is gone. They've been disbanded. They do mention Peacekeeper 01 in here, which there is a version of that character that pop up in the main timeline, and he only existed in the pages of Fear State. He never appeared uh, after the story wrapped up. As a matter of fact, uh, they do mention that Simon State was actually killed off in the pages of I Am Batman, which was a, one of those concepts introduced in Future State that became an ongoing series that got canceled with 19 issues due to low sales. And you know what the strange thing is? They told that since the series wrapped up, we only have one trade released. Really? One? Yeah. Only one. Like, I think collects like the first like five or six issues. And here's the thing. They never release any more trades of the series. Yes, because I think a lot of people felt this. So this is one of two books, the bad books, that all their books are ignoring. The, that what happens in this book is not acknowledged by the DC, by the bad books as a whole. And of course, being the Tim Drake Robin book, which that's just pure, that's just basically a piece of garbage. Yes. And I've seen reviews of that damn thing. Like, oh, they praise Mika Fence for a good writer and they call the, write, the artwork bad. Yeah, that's definitely true. But the artist has done better stuff before and probably going to be afterwards. But Megan Fest Martin, I hope to God she never works on a bad book ever again. Because this that, that book was a piece of garbage. Whatever, have you yet? Oh yeah, so I was talking about how really, really bad this series is. I don't, you know, like, oh, then they claim that, oh, this was the first MJ book. It's by fact, no it wasn't. First one in years, yes, but not the first one ever. Yeah, it's like basically DC had to basically just just, just say that everything that she's saying was, was complete. She just think it was all a lie. Oh, yeah, and she claimed to be a Tim Drake fan. This matter of fact, she added as bi. Which was stupid. Really stupid because it's Marvel DC's thing where, oh, we're trying to push original gay characters, but oh, crap, they're not selling. So let's out our basically... Long time established straight characters as gay or bi. Some characters I don't have a problem with. People like Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, Catwoman don't have a problem with being bi or straight. I have no problem with that at all. But characters like Tim, Iceman, that's an issue. I mean, you already have a gay character who's part of the Batman family. Her name is Batwoman. You might be thinking, is she this book? Uh, shockingly, no. KK is not in this book at all, but she did feature in that book I did review. But yeah, uh, not much to say with two trades. They're good. Uh, so that's it for the review, and that's it for videos tonight. So tomorrow, I'm going to hopefully finish up my review for One Piece. Maybe tomorrow or Wednesday. A comic corner, and maybe a good time. Case closed. Okay, next video. Bye.